Hey YouTube, it's GV Lone Guy. Um, I was watching another video here um, from Starscream 233, and I just I, I just can't help but respond to statements that are that I consider to be just straight out right inaccurate. So I'm going to play this little uh, little bit of the uh, video here where. Uh, Danny gets to the point of describing the definition of salvation. And that's what I've been trying to look for so far in his videos, is the meaning of it all. What is the point of, of the Gnostic religion belief system that he apparently adheres to? So, let me go ahead and play this, and then I'm going to respond a little bit to it. And then Amos 5.8, Seek him that make the seven stars and Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Now let's take a look at some of the books, or some of the stuff that was left out of the Bibles by some of the books. And I'm going to talk about two here real quick. Let's take a look at the Book of Wisdom. You can also go and find this out on the internet, too, if you'd like to cross-reference it. But the Messianic Interpretation by Christians down here, it says that, um, Furthermore, wisdom speaks of personified wisdom in a Trinitarian way, nine, at 917. Who has learned your counsel unless you have given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? The next verse says that salvation is an act of wisdom. In Christianity, Salvation is an act reserved for God, but here it is given to wisdom, thus identifying them with one another. So basically it's saying wisdom is your salvation. Now, okay, that's the main point that I was looking for. So wisdom is your salvation. So that is really what the question I had, which I never could get answered, but apparently this is the answer. Wisdom is your salvation. And that makes sense from the standpoint of all of this being a study of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's what I'm saying is there's a difference between the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. Now you can put a picture up of the tree of life and call it a tree of life if you want. You can call that the tree of life, but that doesn't make it the tree of life. That just makes it another part of what your definition is of the life and the meaning of life in the universe. So I don't want to sound preachy and I, I hesitated a long time before I even put this video out, but I can't uh, stand by and just let this stuff go. So I'm going to let it finish playing and then I wanted to respond to the next statement here. I'm in the Jewish Encyclopedia page, and I'm going to prove to you they have uh, listings of things like Son of God, Daughters of Men. Okay, he's going to prove something to us, so I'm, I'm looking for the proof here now. Son of Men, stuff like that on their, on their site, which you don't really see definitions for anywhere else. But what it says here is yet the term by no means carries the idea of physical descent from and essentially unity with the God the Father. The Hebrew idiom conveys nothing further than a simple expression of godlikeness or godliness. And so I'm going to prove this to you because we're going to go over here to the Book of Wisdom and we're going to take a look at this one right here. And it says, for if the just man be the son of God. So the just man being the um, the good man, the, he's godlike is what it's basically saying. And so that basically means there is no one son of God. It basically means that if you are a certain way, if you're wise, if you're just, that you are a son of God. Okay, now that right there is what I've got a problem with. So I'm going to go ahead and read through these verses here in uh, this, the Book of Wisdom. We're going to read the context around this. And as an analyst, I'm really surprised that you wanted to just pull out this thing sort of out of context. But I'm going to go ahead and read this. So let, let me go ahead and read that to you and we'll see who the who these verses are talking about all right here we go okay here's the verse 
if the just man be the son of God. Right there, that's his proof that we're all sons of God, and therefore Jesus is not special, not the son of God. Anyway, let me read this in context. Verse 13, he professeth, they're talking about him, about Jesus. He professeth to have the knowledge of God, and he calls himself the child of the Lord. He was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous unto us, even to behold, for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstains from our ways and from as from filthiness. He pronounced the end of the just to be blessed and maketh his boast that God is his father. Verse 17, let us see if his words be true and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. For if the just man, they're talking about Jesus, be the son of God, he, the father, will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Okay? Let us examine him with a dis with despitefulness and torture, that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. See, they said they were going to torture him. Let us condemn him with a shameful death, for by his own saying he shall be respected. Such things they did imagine and were deceived, for their own wickedness hath blinded them. As for the mysteries of God, they knew them not. So this is clearly talking about Jesus and the way that they were going to examine him and prove him and test him. This is clearly those religionists talking about Jesus. All right, let's see what else he's going to say here. People have the ability to be the Son of God. Now, the Gospel of Thomas was another book that was left out of the Bible. And I'll tell you something, this one right here has got a lot of good stuff in it. To further back up, this is the part about the, the Son of God. Listen to this. It says, Jesus said, if your leaders say to you, look, the Father's kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the sky will precede you. If they say to you, it's in the sea, then the fish will precede you. Rather, the Father's kingdom is within you and is outside you, just like I said, the correspondence rule, right? And also, you know, in the Bible, it says the kingdom of God is within you. So what it's saying here, then, is it's saying that it's your consciousness that determines whether or not that you reach the kingdom of God. And that's what the second coming of Christ is all about. It's about raising your consciousness. So finally, I forgot to show you this, but... Okay, so there you go. In Danny's mind, wisdom is your salvation, and it's your consciousness. And that's what the second coming of Christ is, is when we have a great consciousness awakening collectively. So basically, I mean, I don't know. I thought we had an agreement that the Bible was the divinely inspired word of God. And... If that's the case, that tells an entirely different story of salvation. And I read the verses previously in another video about how we were, uh, by partaking of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, mankind has been pushed out of the garden and blocked from access to the tree of life for fear that we would live in our present sinful condition for eternity. So you may not want to use the word sinful condition, but whatever the words are, I think you have to admit that we all have a base human nature, fallen, um, evil nature that we carry around, commonly referred to as the flesh. And I don't mean our physical flesh, but the flesh. Anyway, the story in the Bible is that the only way for us to have access back to the tree of life is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. 
There is salvation through no other. And in the word of God, Jesus said exactly that. He also said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except by me. So these are things that are in the divinely inspired word of God. So if your salvation is your wisdom and the consciousness is the uh, second coming of Christ, uh, then uh, what must you be thinking in this present state of affairs where people and mankind are so fallen and so far from this God-like, Christ-like consciousness that you're talking about? They're so fallen and so far from it. What must you think in terms of salvation? Salvation must be a long way off, and the second coming of Christ must be a long way off if the entire world is going to have to collectively raise our consciousness to the point where we are all of a sudden the second coming of Christ. Anyway, I just wanted to clear that up. I didn't want to stand by and just allow that to go out as if this is truth. Just because somebody says something is the truth doesn't make it the truth. Um, again, I'm simply referring back to the Word of God. I have, My opinion is useless. As, by the way, is your opinion. The only thing that really matters is the Word of God. You can say that it was created by the Catholics and that they've con twisted it and confused us all. The, the confusion is really on the side of anyone trying to find salvation through any other means other than through Jesus, through the blood of Christ. That's where the confusion comes from. So you correctly stated it when you said that you were confused. Okay, just one more thing from the same video city will come down through that open space now think about it how did this lady who wrote this statement ellen white know in the year 1848 a time when there were no scopes of significant size a time when scientists were completely ignorant of the fact that there was an open space in Orion. so that's a good question how does she know and how did the churches know? Okay. Here's how they knew. Get this up here where I can read it. It's on the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula is a diffuse nebula situated south of Orion's belt in the constellation of Orion. It is one of the brightest nebulae and is visible to the naked eye in the night sky. Now keep in mind that in 1848, they didn't have street lights or a lot of electricity at all. I, I imagine that when the lights went out at night, it was dark. And they were out there sitting on their prairies, looking up into the night sky. I'm pretty sure they could see a good, clear shot of the Orion Nebula. Same thing with the, uh, the early uh, writers. All right, anyway, that's it. I'm going to end this video right here. And really, I mean, I don't want to sound preachy. I, I really don't want to have to make another video. I, I'm, I'm just going to try and avoid that. Anyway, take care. Just straight out, right, inaccurate. So I'm going to play this little, uh, little bit of the uh, video here where... Uh, Danny gets to the point of describing the definition of salvation. And that's what I've been trying to look for so far in his videos is the meaning of it all. What is the point of, of the Gnostic religion belief system? Let's talk about two here real quick. Let's take a look at the Book of Wisdom. You can also go and find this out on the internet too if you'd like to cross-reference it. But the messianic interpretation by Christians down here, it says that, um, furthermore, wisdom speaks of personified wisdom in a Trinitarian way, nine, at 917.
Who has learned your counsel unless you have given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? The next verse says that salvation is an act of wisdom. In Christianity, salvation is an act reserved for God. But here it is given to wisdom, thus identifying them with one another. So basically it's saying wisdom is your salvation. Now, okay, that's the main point that I was looking for. So wisdom is your salvation. So that is really what the question I had, which I never could get answered. But apparently this is the answer. Wisdom is your salvation. And then hey, YouTube, it's GV Lone Guy. Um, I was watching another video here um, from Starscream 233, and I just I, I just can't help but respond to statements that are that I consider to be that he apparently adheres to. So let me go ahead and play this, and then I'm going to respond a little bit to it. And then Amos 5:8, seek him that make the seven stars and Orion and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Now let's take a look at some of the books, or some of the stuff that was left out of the Bibles by some of the books, and I'm going to 